this comes up all the time in our practice. Um, especially if you come to this practice through certain groups or organizations, there's this tendency, and certainly there's one group in particular that comes to mind here, but it's, it's true, it's just human nature, uh, that under the guise of Buddhism, Nichiren's uh, doctrine of Buddhism, or Nichiren's Buddhism, as they would say, which is not what we practice. We practice Shakyamuni's Buddhism, that is the only Buddhism. Nichiren is a great scholar with a very uh, a lucid scholarship and um, uh, support of Shakyamuni's Buddhism. Nichiren exhorts us all the time to practice Lotus Sutra Buddhism. That's not his but his elucidation, his bodhisattva uh, uh, instantiation on, in the world, his influence, is, he is the votary of the Lotus Sutra. And uh, so we'd certainly follow Nichiren's scholarship uh, and give him all credit for that. Um, but that being said, what are we talking about when we're talking about Buddhist practice? Uh, these organizations, these groups, uh, and, and I'll, I, I'll avoid naming them unless I do a specific reference to them, but um, they, they tend to teach uh, chanting for things, chanting for a better job, a better relationship, a car, uh, uh, chant to change that karma. And we hear that in, a, in a, an authoritarian Western society, a capitalistic world, uh, that that means that we are asking for something from our world. Um, and I, that is a fundamental problem of Buddhist practice. So listen carefully. When Nichiren spoke, and we just talked about the third doctrine in the most recent videos, um, you, you really, you have to work on getting this clear in your mind. When we go to this mandala and we invoke Gohonzon, we invoke our Buddha wisdom, our Buddha nature, that is the entire goal of Buddhism. Stop right there. When I chant, Namu Myoho Renge Kyo, I chant for one thing and one thing only. Single-mindedly, remember, Nichiren said, quoting Nichiren, single-mindedly chant to awaken your Buddha nature, to be at one with Buddha, to be awakened, period. You see, attaining your enlightened state is is the answer is the goal is the reward because from that place everything in samsara finds its place works out is perfect the moment you say to yourself as you're facing this mandala i want i need give me, change this, change that. You're not in your Buddha mind. You're firmly in the monkey mind of samsara. Because what are you chanting for? You're chanting for desires. That's a complete and utter misreading of earthly desires, our enlightenment. What is meant by that gosho and what is meant by everything Nichiren teaches is to use our samsaric, bewildered, attached, obsessed mind and use that motivation, not the object, the motivation, the energy, the will to take us to this uh, mandala of Gohonzon. And with that will, single-mindedly awaken Buddha. Don't ask your Buddha nature for a new car. That's the, this, look, we do this because it's our nature. We convert everything into a want or need 
It's we live in the age of greed, ego, and foolishness, stupidity. What is foolishness? It's going to this mandala of Gohonzon and chanting to get something from the world that's firmly samsara. What are we practicing Buddhism for? To liberate ourselves from samsara. So what are you doing? Do you see the conundrum here? This may seem like a, a confounding or simple thing to say, but to actually really get it in your mind that when you go to this mandala, and this is why the mandala is so important. This is Nietzsche's whole, whole aha moment. That when we have this picture of Namu Myoho Renge Kyo, the practice, the mode to awaken your Buddha nature, the representation of the entirety of that teaching, that he's, Nichiren has given us an object to skew, to trick, to deviate, to distract our samsaric mind from earthly stuff to single-mindedly awaken our Buddha. That's the only goal. Because from there, everything works out. If every time you go to this mandala and you just are focused on changing stuff and, and, and uh, achieving stuff, getting stuff, moving stuff, you're, you're firmly rooted in samsara. You're still planting seeds of Buddhahood, yes. You're not throwing away your practice, but you're so, so deeply impeding your progress. I want you to consciously know that no matter how badly you need to pay rent this month, that when you get in front of this mandala and you chant fervently, that you do not do it with a solid earthly samsaric mind of pay my rent, Gohanzan. Use that same Ichinen and flip it. Look at your Gohanzan, this mandala, and demand your enlightenment and demand your Buddha nature, your Buddha mind, your clarity. Have total confidence that if you do that, the rent will pay itself. It is not something you're asking of your Buddha nature. All you ask of your Buddha nature is to have it, to awaken this samsaric monkey mind to have your Buddha. Have your, <laughs> have your Buddha and experience it too. <laughs> to modify uh, the Queen's, uh, I can't remember, Mary, uh, which Queen was it who said, have your cake and eat it too? So have your Buddha and experience it too. Experience Buddha. And the other earthly things will simply happen. They will ameliorate because your life will radiate Buddha nature. Not because Buddha gave you rent. Please get the difference. It will make all the difference in your practice. A huge weight will lift from you. When you shift your mind to invoke your Buddha mind, all of those other concerns, all of your wants and desires will turn into enlightenment because rather than chasing those desires, you are chasing your Buddha-ness. 
with the same ichnin and will that you use in your human mind, apply that volition to attaining your Buddha mind. Not to attaining the desires. That's not what that means. And I understand your confusion. Because you have massive organizations like NSA and SGI and, and others telling you, chant for what you want. Oh my goodness, that's so wrong. It's take that energy and that desire that you have and plug it into attaining your Buddhahood. All of the other stuff takes care of itself. Because that other stuff is your suffering. Why do we practice Buddhism? To liberate ourselves from suffering. So why are you trying to attain suffering? It's, it's completely counter to Buddhism. And yet, we get this message constantly. And ask yourself why we get this message. Right? It's politics. It's power. It's if I can get you to mystically, magically have a wishing tool then you'll do anything I say. Right? That's the mechanism of authoritarian capitalism. That's not Buddhism. And I will repeat this to my grave. Just as Nietzsche has said it so clearly, single-mindedly chant to awaken your Buddha. He never says, chant to gain possessions firmly instantiate your obsessions get what you want from this Aladdin's lamp there's never that kind of rhetoric no rather it is take that same kind of passion that you have about stuff in this life and convert that energy not those desires that energy toward manifesting your Buddha nature. That is the only thing that should be happening between you and this mandala. And your Daimoku. Anytime you chant, you should be chanting for your enlightenment. You get in a car accident, chant for your enlightenment. You, you, uh, you, you get a, even in good time, you get a bonus check or something, chant for your enlightenment. Chant appreciation for your enlightenment. If you make gains in life and you're thankful, you're in a new relationship and you're deeply in love, chant gratitude for your Buddha nature. Because that's how you've gotten these rewards. Even though they're earthly things, don't look at them at earth, as earthly rewards. Look at them as tremendous support for your practice of being enlightened. Same thing goes the other way. If some obstacle manifests in your life or in a loved one's life, whatever the situation, chant for your Buddha nature to come and change the situation because the situation is mental. That's what we're changing. That's what Buddhism is about. Your mental life state. And your mental life state influences everything you experience, right? Self and environment. I say this over and over and over and over and uh, in different ways. And I, we are, uh, you know, we're really stubborn, we humans. We go, oh yeah, I did. That's what I do. That's he's saying the same thing I hear all the time, you know. So if I have problems, take it to Gohonzon. Understand that you're not taking your problem to Gohonzon. What you're doing is taking your energy, your impetus, your attachments, your obsessions, your your all involving mind about this particular thing, and you're putting it there while you then go to Gohonzon and say. Here's my motivation. Make me Buddha. Awaken my Buddha mind. Not awaken my Buddha mind to fix that. That's samsaric. Awaken my Buddha mind with all the confidence in the world that simply by awakening your Buddha mind, that ceases to be a problem. You don't have to direct that. All you have to do is awaken 
buddhaness. Everything else becomes clear, takes care of itself. Is that not the description of Buddhahood we're constantly reading about? It's about confidence. Know that therein is the solution, your liberation from these things that cause suffering. That is how to chant, my friends. I guarantee it, the shift that will happen when you finally get that in every pore of your mind. It, I, I, I can't explain it any other way. It is like a huge weight suddenly, like your very breath itself inflates your weightlessness. It, you'll tingle. I'm tingling right now talking about it. <laughs> All right, enough tingling. Let's get into this next go show.